Hello and welcome to Locket Land Life podcast number 10, which is a special as it includes a visit to Hume Castle with lovely Debbie Zavinsky, the author of my favourite craft book, In the Footsteps of Sheep. So Debbie and I are climbing up to Hume Castle and we're searching, searching for fleece on the way. And you'll see me, hear me say to Debbie, is that a bit good? And she said, there's something better ahead. So we thought we'd take you with us. Here Debbie is sorting through the fleece she's picked up, identifying which bits are good and which ones to keep or throw. Um, but she's also sort of picking out all the vegetable matter, all the bits of moss and grass, um, bits of weeds, and trying to pick them out as she goes. And this is what she did when she wrote her book. She'd be walking and looking and thinking, but picking through the fleece that she was gathering. Um, making it ready for spinning and ready to prepare. Um, it's part of the process, part of sorting out really what she wants to keep. And then she has a little friend giving her a little bit extra, just like that. And this is the bit where I call Debbie a goat. Now that might seem rather rude, but I was actually paying her a compliment. I was saying she was nimble and agile, like a mountain goat. And as Debbie um, proudly hails from Wales, she's a nimble, agile Welsh mountain goat. So I don't think she took it as an insult. So here we are inside Hume Castle near Kelso, which was built on a natural outcrop of rock. With its important strategic position, it was frequently destroyed and rebuilt over the centuries of border fighting between the English and the Scots, and was finally fully destroyed in 1650 by forces of Oliver Cromwell. The present castle walls were built from ruins of the former building in 1789 as a folly to be admired from a distance. And now it's time to learn more from Debbie about stick spinning. I hope you love it. This is all the stuff that we've picked up. We've been picking out the dry grass as we go up and we can separate it now. Um, the softer pieces, this is softer, 
you can just just by feel you know and if you want to know if it's actually um strong enough to spin then you can tug it like this you know see i don't have that much and it should give a little snappy sound and it should be strong now you can see that's tended to come apart yeah which means that it's been out in the weather for too long for a bit long you can still spin it but it's not as it's not as robust let's try another bit hmm? Two. <laughs> another. Now, again this feels nice and soft washed by the rain that feels a bit stronger uh -huh. that's quite good that's not pulling apart other pieces I don't need to worry too much about the herbage. We can take that out. Let's find a, a coarser bit to, to... This bit was the one that Lucy picked off the, the fence and you can see that that has been pre-twisted by the wind. It's all almost already yarn. But in a way, that's a disadvantage because... Yeah, we um, can't control it, can we? Yeah. Now this looks... This bit here... If you see things in the see that they mentioned vm you're thinking what's vm it's the vegetable matter so it's the bits of daggy bits of grass yeah. and straw that might mm. not have been picked out little bits of moss moss yeah. is something that and is... sometimes even on properly sort of machine pre uh, prepared wool you can still find a yeah. bit of vm and i like it because it shows that it's real you know i always joke about some yarns are just too posh for me this kind of yarn isn't too posh for me, it's just about right. Um, what we can see in this yarn is, in this fleece, is there's the odd black fibre and the odd very white fibre yeah. that's not crinkly. And these are the Kemp fibres. It's it, on there, isn't it? Yeah, it means that the, the yarn you make from these will be coarser. A little bit prettier because these but, won't spin in they'll stick out won't they yeah. at an angle yeah but, that's a really good bit there but in actual fact just about everything we've picked up here is it's pretty much usable this is a bit like lotta's fur she has those long hairs yes. on top and then the fluffy underneath i've often thought of uh, spinning my lottie's fluff um because she's very soft she and is soft black underneath um so the next thing we need, having picked through our, our finds and deciding, well, we can tackle most of that, is you need your feral spinner's kit here. <laughs> <laughs> we were laughing as we came out about how waxy this has become, because it's basically been greased with all the lanolin that's passed through it over the years. It's just got, it's almost oiled, isn't it? Yeah, yes, it's now oil. become oil, oil, oil polyester, <laughs> probably. <laughs> So in the here, new, Debbie's created a new fabric there, yeah. oiled poly polyester. Is, well that's my monostopine for plying. This is my spinning stick, which is an old pern. I use for spinning. There's, um, well, this is just an odd stick, odd bit of driftwood that I've also used as a spinning stick. So you can start very simple if you wish. Debbie's been known to make um, tools out of bits when she's been on the islands where there are very few trees and you can read about this in her lovely book. Um, there aren't trees, she can't collect driftwood, so she's used bits of bone that she's found on the beach washed up and sort of drift bone. Yes, drift bone. <laughs> drift bone. <laughs> and she's sort of lashed them together with string to make um, spindles and yeah, nostal pins and, and, and nitty noddies. Nitty noddy, particularly yeah. nitty noddy. Ever resourceful, yes, now, Debbie. I didn't carry these with me when I did my walk around Scotland for my book, but these are really very useful. They're just cat brushes, small cat brushes, and they can be used as mini carders for preparing your fibre. And they're much cheaper than buying real carders. Absol <laughs> absolutely. One of the most expensive tools I think I've seen. So they are. And this is a, a, a little sample nitty noddy, um, but you can lash one together. Yeah. As, um, and I like... Sorry, I like how Debbie's said. fixed it because obviously the wood's given slightly and got narrower. So this end will have come a bit loose and she's stuffed it with fleece just to get a nice tight seal so that this bit isn't falling off constantly. At least I'm guessing that's what you've done. Absolutely. It's the perfect thing. I told you she was so resourceful. 
there's my needle and in. That's for winding your skein. This is um, this is a bag of fleece that I picked earlier. Um, sometimes I pick the the coloured bits from um, the marker fluid, which ought to be washable. They ought to wash out. Sometimes they don't, and they just add a bit of character. Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's always a pair of a pair of glasses, but I've, I've got my slightly better pair with me. And that's because I was making you do my darning earlier. Then there's Conditioning shampoo. That's <laughs> no, not usually in there. Yeah, I don't know. I must have been out camping and that's where I took my shampoo. Toothbrush? Those no, but I tell you what I do have. I've got Macropore for taping up sore toes if I've been walking too far. And these are my sock knitting needles. And very small, they're even smaller than the 15. Yeah, those centimetre. are those are yeah. five inch ones. Wow, yeah, that's all that's that's money. money. Give me some mm. money, money, please, Debs. Well, I suppose six inches, 150, take off 25, one, two, five, oh. 10 centimetre. Yeah, five inch. No, they're a bit more than that because they're 12.5s instead of 15. Okay, okay. That's it. Yeah. I always oh, advise people to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh we've got a tape measure. Now, a friend of mine gave me this and I love it. I don't know if you can see. You'd have to look very closely. But this goes around my wrist and it's marked in centimetres along one side and inches along the other. I have so one somewhere. I love I, them. I carry this, I wear this constantly and it's always with me. Yeah. And although it's stretched and distorted slightly, I don't care. It's accurate enough. It's, it's accurate to the Minsky measurements. <laughs> so here we go. If I was to, if I was to do this as properly as I possibly could, I don't want properly. Do you not? No, I want Debbie. Well, shall I? I will just give a quick demonstration. I don't necessarily want fully improper. So here we are. These are just used to brush out the tangles. In the fleece. And they also make everything go in the same direction, don't they? Yeah. And I'm, I'm not going to spend time doing it fully. Enough to just get a little handful that we can start off with. And then I tease out a wee bit and we'll wrap that round the head of my stick. Well, this is, just want to say very quickly, this isn't, you'll hear sort of drop spinning and spindle spinning. This is a totally new, well, mm -hmm. not new, it's an old totally different technique that doesn't involve any real equipment except a slightly heavy stick. Yeah. It's stick spinning and it's, yeah, it's, it's quite unique, isn't it? It is. It, it's sort of, um, it relies upon a slightly different mechanism from ordinary spinning. Ordinary spinning or drop spindle, you'll twist the spindle to impart the twist to the fibres to get, make them strong. Oops, so using to oof. spin them. But with this, it relies upon the fact that every time you turn or wind a bit of yarn, you impart a little bit of twist. You'll know this if, you've, um, uh, if you're winding up a rope and you find it gets all kinky. So every turn gives a wee bit of twist. So what we do is we cradle the stick loosely in one hand and then with the other, we I call it pretend winding. We and I call it driving. It, Debbie isn't actually winding the uh, the fibre onto the stick. She's using the fibre to drive the stick, stick around. Out, absolutely. So it, it doesn't ever get more fibre on the stick at this point. But what it does do is it makes that little bit of, of um, that section of fibre all twisty. So so there we are, we're cradling our stick and we're driving the stick round and round and round with that short length of, of fibre. And once we've got it really curly, I borrow the finger and thumb that's been cradling the stick, pinch at the junction between that twisted fibre and the other fibre in my hand and just tease out a length and then let go with the left finger and thumb. And you can see the twist runs along. So now I have a length of yarn, 
twice as long as it was before. Now this time I hold the stick tight and I actually wind it on a couple of turns till I'm back to um, an inch almost. Yeah, just an inch away from the head. And then I do the same again. So the hand, the right hand that's holding the bundle of fleece, it doesn't move along the fleece. It just pinches at one point and stays exactly at that place. The left hand just cradles the, the stick and then we drive the stick round and round and round. You could count, but I never really do. I just keep going until I can, I can almost feel with the finger and thumb of my right hand when it gets twisty. So every turn of the stick will impart a bit of twist to this length of yarn. So now I do the same again. I get finger and thumb from the, the stick hand, as it were. I pinch just where the right hand was pinching and then I tease out. It's usually about five centimeters of, of fiber. Then if you watch carefully, when I let go of my left finger and thumb, you should see- So technical filming here, I'm just dragging the phone nearer. Run along. You should have seen it there, the twist running along the fibres and now I've made a new length of yarn. But if you let go of this pinch here, that energy would run into the floof in your hand it and would. you wouldn't then be able to dry, dra draft it out. Yeah, and that's, that's the big secret. The big secret is this finger and thumb here is stopping the twist from getting up into the teased out fibres and snarling them up. So now I hold the stick tightly and wind on again. And when I wind on the new yarn, I keep it close to the head of the stick. It's more hmm, aerodynamic isn't quite the word, but it helps maintain the sort of equilibrium of the... So there's some lead, because this is an old weaving tool, there's mm -hmm. lead, well metal. Yeah, it's got lead. a metal head. Metal head, which makes it heavier, mm -hmm. which helps with the driving. It's not, you're driving something that doesn't want to be driven, which kind of makes it easier somehow. Well, it sort of gives it more momentum. Yeah. I, I, there'll be some, we need a sort my non-scientific. A physicist to properly explain Joe, it. Joe could probably <laughs> explain it to us, couldn't he? So a weighted stick like this is the, is the perfect tool. It's Although easier an than... ordinary stick will do, yeah. especially once you get a nice a, bit of... A bit of fibre yeah. built up at the end of the stick, which gives it a bit more weight. Um, and so here we are, we're making another short length of yarn. So this is and what you did in your book, isn't it? You yeah. You literally walked around Scotland. Doing this. Doing this, <laughs> picking bits up as you walked, washing them in streams yes. with your conditioning shampoo. Oh, well, yeah, I'm not quite sure how that's got in there. That's hilarious. <laughs> Camping on beaches um, and then spinning. And then you would wind it onto your Nostra pin to ply right. it and then Debbie would knit the socks of the different sheep breeds as she um, travelled and visited them and often on your own not knowing where you were headed. Yes I didn't plan an awful lot it seemed to be I didn't know where I would find the sheep so it didn't seem to well I knew roughly where I'd find the sheep. <laughs> In the fields Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly which fields you know so I but There's I one tale where you travelled to one of the islands to find a particular breed of sheep, only to discover they weren't on the island that they should have been on. They were on three fields, two bus rides back oh, that you'd missed. Oh yes, yeah. And what I were they, which sheep were they? That was the, the Hebrideans. So yes, I went through it. South Uist and um, there were lots of them. And then I got into North Uist and then on to Harris. And I don't know, where were they? Um, but eventually I found a lady who bred them. Yes. So I had to kind of, uh, to sort of tap into local knowledge there. <laughs> I went to the co-op, to the local co-op. Always you know, to the co-op. Always <laughs> So here we are. I mean, it's a slow method of spinning, but it's eminently controllable. This fibre is as fine and as perfect as any you could spin on the most expensive spinning wheel. And Debbie yeah. has a shawl um, that is exquisite. It's the softest lace like baby shawl, I wanted to steal it. Proper woolly, but yes. soft as soft yeah. and delicate. And it was just from bits that she collected on her daily, you collected on your daily walks for da a- Daily dog walk. For one sort of season, one win autumn winter season, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And 
you just would think it was in the most expensive, luxurious yarn from Top Mill. It was wonderful. Because you have the advantage as a hand spinner of picking, picking through the fleece and getting exactly what you want. You know, you, you will pick the finest and the softest if that's what you're, you're after. Um, now I could oh, show... Would you like me to show the basic winding of the Niddy Noddy? Um, or is that a step too far? Say that to, to yeah. another occasion. Yes, we'll have another, another, another meet up. So I wanted to show you Debbie spinning on her stick because it's just such a magically simple, almost almost of another time. It's so simplistic and so effective. And you think, why do we evolve the world so much and to the nth degree when something so simple can produce such fabulous results? Um, and I'm, I've asked Debbie to bring some of these perns over to, with me and I'll have them in the shop um, along with copies of her book. And if you haven't read Debbie's book, you need to. I adore Debbie. I, you'll have heard me saying, if I could be Debbie, I would be happy. Other than that, I'm moving in with Debbie because She's just amazing, the most <laughs> intrepid, resourceful, awesome, humble and generous person I know. And yeah, an absolute role model. Yes, I'm going to make her blush. <laughs> um, but yeah, and here she is in her shorts. It's freezing. She's got a vest on. Yeah, um, I know, a vest and shorts. <laughs> I was a vest, shorts, hat, woolly hat and I have gloves on. Yeah, but um, it's May. Put on the shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you haven't read Debbie's book, read it. Buy it from Debbie, buy it from me, buy it any way you can. It is truly fabulous. Um, I love it. And I don't know, maybe it's worth saying, if anybody is inspired by the idea of stick spinning, I, I have a little Facebook page called The Feral Spinner. There is a wee video on there explaining um, the stick spinning uh, again, you know, if you if you wanted to sort of, it's probably a slightly longer video. But it's not a very good one. I did it myself. It's quite embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> and one day when the world is normal again, I'm going to be stealing Debbie away for some more wild retreats, and I have to come and join her because meeting Debbie and spending time with her is special. And yeah, well. It's actually special to be with Lucy as well. I must admit. <laughs> Thank you. She makes you feel, yeah, she makes you feel very special. Yeah. <laughs> That's because you are already <laughs> used that. So there we go. That was our little trip up to Hume Castle and a bit of spinning. And I will be adding this into my podcast. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye bye. I really hope you've enjoyed the special stick spinning episode of my podcast with Debbie Zawinski. Spending time with a lovely friend is always very special. I have new copies of her book back in stock, all signed by Debbie, along with a handful of the perns, which you can also buy if you want to take up spinning on your own, and two of Debbie's special stick spinning kits that contain a pern, um, a hand-prepared nostapin from Driftwood, prepared by Joe, Debbie's lovely husband, some fluff and some basic instructions and guidelines. And huge thanks to Debbie for taking the time to do this recording for us and share her knowledge so generously. You're fab, Debbie.